Crystal is a ripoff of White Castle. But this hasn't stopped this food chain from reaching great heights in the United States, especially in the southern parts. Crystal has a menu of miniature food, and with how Crystal became prominent for its small square hamburgers or sliders, depending on where you're from, you could say bigger isn't always better. It's because of the size of their hamburgers that DJ Dewey Phillips and Elvis Presley loved Crystal. It even had a loyal customer in Dolly Parton. But this food chain's journey wasn't always crystal clear. It faced money troubles and was on the verge of losing its business. This is the not-so-crystal-clear story of the crystal fast food chain. It all began when Rhodey Davenport Jr., one of Crystal's founders, visited White Castle. When Davenport saw how White Castle operated and still had customers despite the country being in the Great Depression, he paid attention to what made White Castle unique. Davenport Jr. noticed that White Castle's customer appreciated their cleanliness, pleasant and well-trained staff, and cheap yet filling meals. He believed he could replicate this and returned to Chattanooga, sharing his concept with Glenn Sherrill, and the two decided to create their fast food chain. It was time to choose a name, and according to Crystal, their name only came about by pure chance. Davenport Jr. and his wife, Mary McGee Davenport, were coming down a mountain road when she spotted a lawn ornament shaped like a crystal on a neighbor's lawn, and an idea struck her. She told her husband that since he and his partner prioritized cleanliness, they should name their restaurant Crystal. Mary based the name she suggested on the expression clean as crystal, and so Davenport and Cheryl had their name. They added a twist to change the C from crystal to a K. The founders opened their first restaurant, a modular porcelain stainless steel building built in Chicago and assembled in Chattanooga on October 1932. Their building had a crystal ball on it, in reference to where the idea for their restaurant's name came from. The founders copied everything they felt made White Castle special, including White Castle's small menu. But Crystal even had a smaller menu and only offered burgers and coffee. However, the odds were against them. Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more. The United States was in the Great Depression, and people still had reservations about ground beef in their burgers. Although White Castle had removed some of the prejudice against ground beef, some people still thought it was unsanitary. Crystal's co-founders weren't discouraged, and they proceeded as planned. They were convinced that they were on the right track when their first customer, French Jenkins, spent only 35 cents when he ordered six Crystal Burgers and a cup of coffee. Their conviction doubled when their second customer, Roy Ward, ordered 12 Crystal Burgers just to prove that he could eat more than Jenkins, the first customer. This competition would become the basis for the restaurant's official eating competition. The Crystal Square Off, which the company formed later in 2004. The Major League Eating approved the competition, which took about 8 minutes. The rules of the competition were simple. Contestants were to eat the most burgers, and there should have been instances where the contestants ate more than 100 burgers within 8 minutes. The Crystal Square Off was short-lived, with the last event taking place in 2009. Due to their cleanliness image, Crystal had white uniforms for their employees. Also, the restaurant served its customer using cheap porcelain, which was different from what the other fast food services used. The image did the business well, and it was one of the core reasons behind its acceptability. Soon, the founders began to think of expansion. After the Second World War, as the economy began to improve, so did sales. Crystal started to evolve and expand to other locations slowly, but there was a limit to their expansion. The company had made a deal with White Castle that their business would not extend to the north where White Castle had influence. In return, White Castle also promised that it wouldn't extend to the southeast, where Crystal had its influence. The reason for the deal was the two companies offering similar products and competing against each other would be mutually destructive. The deal remained in place when Davenport, who served as the company's president, died in 1943, and even when his partner, Cheryl, who succeeded him, resigned in 1961, R.B. Davenport III and successive leaders kept strictly to the deal. In the 50s, there was a great demand for cars in America, and businesses began to respond to this demand. Since Americans love to drive everywhere and anywhere, Crystal stopped building sit-in restaurants. Their new locations were drive through restaurants where customers could order meals from their cars and eat in them. The demand for fast food rose even higher in the 60s and 70s, and these fast food restaurants became more of a necessity than a luxury. With the workforce explosion in America, convenience and speed became what guided customers' tastes. 
So Crystal began to phase out its drive through and build units that allow customers to sit in for convenience or take out their food. However, there was a problem. Crystal didn't want a franchise. The company believed that franchising would only affect its revenue. It wanted to continue to expand but preferred that the company owned new outlets. Its competitors, McDonald's and Burger King, relied heavily on franchising to spread their influence faster. Crystal didn't panic. The business had a bag of tricks up its sleeve and it began to use it. In 1967, Crystal began to embark on marketing. As a restaurant based predominantly in the southeastern part of America, the company began to lean into its southern identity. They propped themselves as the choice of the top southern celebrities. Crystal hammered on the fact that the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley and Dolly Parton, loved their burgers. The business also claimed that its name inspired country musician Crystal Gale to choose her stage name. The company's strategy worked and it was just getting started. While Crystal didn't sell franchises, it bought franchises from other businesses. In 1969, the company created a subsidiary called Davco Foods. Davco Foods served as a franchise-obtaining arm of Crystal. Through it, the company bought franchises from Wendy's International, one of its rivals. Crystal was the exclusive franchise owner of Wendy's in Baltimore and Washington, D.C. The company made money from its rivals, and it wasn't affected as it operated Wendy's in markets it didn't plan to expand to. So, its own business continued to thrive. Crystal's Davco did so well that it got more Wendy's franchises and even got exclusive business in Northern Virginia, too. Crystal even used Davco to buy Poe Folk's restaurant chain, but soon made Poe Folk independent and put the Davco unit under it. The company tried to continue to compete, and under its new president, Carl Long, it doubled its efforts to focus on what people knew it for. However, it wasn't enough. The company's expansion slowed, sales became poor, and competitors overcame it with new kitchen technology. The company that once had a clear path to success became lost. Davenport III wasn't ready for his father's work to go down the drain. Cooperating with Long, Crystal made some intensive capital improvements. Crystal hired and trained new staff, got the latest kitchen equipment, and added new items to its menu. Sales improved massively, but the company wasn't out of muddy waters yet. Due to the investment, the company could barely break even. The only way out was for it to expand fast. Davenport III led the fast food chain to begin to sell the franchises in 1990. However, like the founders, he was also skeptical about franchising, so he reached a compromise. Rather than give full licenses to the franchise owners, he only gave them half franchises to build drive through restaurants called the Crystal Quick. By 1992, Crystal had 19 franchise owners, and in 1993, it began to sell full franchise permits. Franchising worked for the company. It became more popular and profits improved. To capitalize on these improvements, the business also began to open new company-owned restaurants to go with the franchise system. Also, it decided to go public and sell shares to the public. However, Crystal soon hit a setback. In 1994, the food chain restaurant's managers sued that Crystal was being unfair to employees by overworking and not compensating them adequately. The company chose to settle out of court but lost millions in legal fees. Despite these expenses, Crystal's legal problems were far from over. In 1995, another set of employees sued, and to prevent losing money, the company declared bankruptcy. In 1997, the company got out of bankruptcy, and Port Royal Holdings, which Philip Sanford, a former Coca-Cola executive owned, bought the company. Sanford took the company private and was determined to improve the company's fortune. He introduced new items to the menu, and by 2002, the company had a presence in 11 states with 420 locations. However, Crystal would eventually close some of these locations. In 2012, Port Royal Holdings sold Crystal to Argonne Capital Group which sold it to Fortress Investment Group LLC and Golden Child Holdings in 2020. In that same 2020, the business filed for bankruptcy again. However, this hasn't stopped the company from operating, as it has now penetrated the Puerto Rican market. From starting as a White Castle ripoff, Crystal grew to have its distinct brand and menu. It underwent financial and legal setbacks, but still got back on a profitable path, even if it meant losing its status as a family business. However, maybe things would have been different if the company had franchised early. Or what do you think? Do you think the Crystal should have franchised their business early? Or is their slow expansion style better? Comment what you think and don't forget to like this untold story of Crystal and subscribe to this channel for more.